right, this is a long time in the making. About over a year ago now, we did an episode titled He Didn't Eat for Eight Years, where we talked to our buddy Zach Barber about a condition that he had that prevented him from eating solid food for a long time. He ended up beating that. We talked about that. We also got into his podcast, Rice Cakes and Pears. But today is a very special day because we're going to get an update on all of that and much more because Zach is with us right now. That Zach, thank you for coming back. <laughs> Much appreciated. Yo, dude. I think I just called you Zach's plural. There's not multiple. Of dude, you. I, Sorry. I, I wish that there were multiple. You have honestly. multiple personalities. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> but not diagnosed. Yeah, not diagnosed. Okay, dude. cool. It's man, great to it, see it you it back. Gives you man. an adrenaline. Yeah, dude. It's it's so good. It's so good to to be back in the podcast space. This is the first like interview I've done and. Almost over a year. It's wow. crazy. So we have a hot interviewer. This is a hot topic. We have you. Why you gave us the first interview, huh? Yeah, dude. Wow. No, I had to. Wow. Had Thank to. you. This is going to be a big headline all over the place. We got Zach out of hiding, out of seclusion. <laughs> this is going to be great. Everybody wants to know where you've been and what you have been doing. So first, I want to get into the condition that you had. If you want to get the nitty gritty, like real details of it. Cause trust me, if you haven't heard that episode, you really are going to want to hear that whole crazy story. But Zach, please do me a favor and kind of, su- and kind of summarize what condition you had and how you overcame that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, I, so I have, I have a disease where it's called eosinophilic esophagitis rolls off the tongue. Oh yeah. And, uh, yeah. And so my white blood cells mistake food as a germ And I was diagnosed when I was 12 and really the symptoms can vary a little bit from person to person. But my symptoms for me personally was I would throw up after eating food. I'd get really bad stomach pain, um, get really nauseous and honestly just get tons of brain fog, feel really fatigued. And, uh, it really plagued my life for a lot of years. I'm, I'm 26 now. So at age 12, I was diagnosed and then, things just got crazy. There were, it it is, it's still a rare disease today, but there's been a lot more research and you know, I'll get into that because I've I've been feeling a lot better past couple of years, but, uh, for a long time, honestly, like I, uh, I couldn't tolerate food. So when I was 15, I was put on a medical formula diet, which sucks. And, uh, I was on that for eight years, uh, ended up getting a G tube. And then the only safe foods I could tolerate for many years was rice cakes and pears, which is the right. name of my podcast and, and liquid shakes, right? Like yeah. Liquid. Yeah. Just like it, the it's, it's funny. Cause it says for ages one and up. Yeah. And I have a, I have a baby now and I've thought I'd love to have her try it. You know, you could just eat formula <laughs> yeah. together. It'd be so yeah. sick. Yeah. For back <laughs> to the old days, huh? Back to the old I don't, days, I, would, I don't know if I could look at that if I were you. I'd be like, oh, get that out. I can't even look at that right now. <laughs> yeah, it's so, so nasty. But uh, yeah, its name is Elecare Jr., which makes you feel really good about yourself. Right, right. So then you <laughs> ended up overcoming that how? Yeah, so in 2020, um, I ended up, you know, striking out on meds, striking out on everything. And I live in Utah and I went to the university of Utah. They actually have some good specialists up there for my disease EOE for short. Um, and they, they pretty much had these, these samples of meds that weren't FDA approved. And at this point I tried everything and they're just like, every time I come into a visit, they're like, I'm sorry, I can't help you. (laughs) And, uh, it's really just like a conversation just to catch up honestly. And and they listen to me vent, but this time they're like, look, we have these samples. We don't know if they'll work, but we, we want, we want you to eat again so bad. And so they, they gave me these meds and it, it was a little bit of a slow process, but um, it's like, a the med is an injection. So it's a, a biologic, I guess. And so I, I just get an injection every two weeks and, uh, it's, it's allowed me to tolerate food again. It, it targets the, the white blood cells, the eosinophils. And so that sounds kind of scary because you kind of need white blood cells, but so far so good, I guess. Yeah. Also it's, it's an injection. I don't remember that from the, the previous episode. So yeah, every two yeah. weeks the, you go in and you main get a shot. Dr- Right, right. So the the main drug is is an injection. I do take some, a few pills um, to kind of assist, but the the main, you know, the heavy lifting is done by the injection. Beautiful, beautiful. And, and yeah. how long have you been on the meds now? So it's been a little over three years. It's crazy. Wow, beautiful. And all and all is well. 
Yeah, you know, all is well. It's the the disease is still there. I still get some fatigue. Okay, but I, I can't complain at this point. I'm like eighty okay. percent like better. Wow. Uh, I'll, I'll take it. I think with rare diseases too, like. I don't know if you'll ever be completely better. And so anything I can get is like such a huge blessing. Yeah. You can, you can hold food down, which is like, that's it. That's what yeah. you, that's what you want. That's what you want it for. You can hold the food down and you can eat. And three yeah, years, dude. I don't see you with like an extra eye. Your, all your hair is there. Your skin yeah. isn't yellow. Uh, your teeth look like they're there. I mean, all, all looks well. Is that, is that true? Or is there, are there yeah. things latent within no, you that we don't know about? Yeah, no, dude, all, all is well. All is great, man. I, uh, every year I feel like I, I get stronger, um, Beautiful. Beautiful. you know, f- feeling good physically, mentally. That's, that's another story, but I, I, I'm happy <laughs> to talk about that. I'm definitely getting a lot better for okay, sure. Good. I mean, working on myself well, a lot. We, we know that anything's better than looking out the window and thinking ISIS is coming. Cause <laughs> yeah. that's what was happening. Right. So yeah, you dude, haven't, yeah. ISIS is not outside anymore. Right. <laughs> Not yeah, in a dude, long no, time. No, no, no ISIS attacks. No <laughs> okay. like crazy car chases with okay. nobody behind you. Okay, good. It's been great. That's where you started, and <laughs> yeah. now that's a real story too. Because you were having yeah. a you were having a hard time mentally, right? At the time, you were on like a mission trip or something. Yeah, yeah, serving a a church mission. So I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. Kind of a mouthful. Mormons. Right. That's very easily recognizable. That's what that church is. Right. And so I was uh, out there for two years and I went out eating rice of pears. You just go out trying to help people, obviously teach people about Christ. Uh, it, it's a good opportunity to get thick skin because everyone, you know, doesn't want to talk oh, to you, yeah. which is fine. But th- dude, that's probably where I picked up my sales skills because I just smile at people. <laughs> sell like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed it though because I wasn't, uh, I guess there, there are missionaries who are knocking the doors and, you know, of robots a little bit, yeah. but oh, I, I just can never be like that. So yeah. I, I get really weird and, and make, make funny jokes. And that was, that was kind of the majority of my mission. But as far as the, the eating thing, I was on rice pears. And then at one point I started becoming allergic to rice and pears, which was oh my such a bummer. Um, one thing you can and, have. Right. Yeah. And so I was like on water only and my G tube with medical formula for uh, uh, several months. And then I pretty much just pushed myself way past my limit. And, and one day I woke up and thought, you know, ISIS is after me. And it, it was such a surreal experience. It really broke me down. And I, I think it wasn't just that event. I think leading up to it, I was kind of breaking mentally and not realizing it. And so in some ways it's, it's cool to look back at that because I, I pretty much lost all ability to deal with any type of stress, whether it was a conversation like if I try to have a conversation with you, what this 2018, I came home. Um, I, I would have like started twitching or like not being able to move freeze. Yeah. Um, it happens to me so all the time it, besides like people I like, like you. So I feel yeah. that. Yeah, dude. It, it It's crazy, man. Yeah. It helps when you, when you have homies yeah. uh, to talk to you, but <laughs> it, it's, it's good, man. I, it's like, I don't know. There, there's ups and downs. That's life. But I feel mentally there are a lot of ups and downs for me, but I've, I've gotten to a point where I can handle a lot of things, handle stress, handle being a dad, which has been crazy. Right. Um, we'll get to that. Yeah, dude, I, life's good. That. Yeah. Yeah. We will. That, yeah, definitely. So it's been a three years since till you, since you can eat, right? Yeah. Okay. So how's that going? Is there, what are you eating right now? <laughs> well, what's on the what's orange. on the menu usually? Yeah, dude, I uh, I ate some orange chicken before this. Beautiful, it was really good. Beautiful, um, dude. I I eat like every morning. I uh, I get a bagel and then cook two eggs. I I don't like scrambled eggs. I think they taste different. Really? Um, what do you yeah do? yeah. Do I do think they got side? a different what taste. What are you doing? The fried? What are you doing? For yeah sun? yeah. So uh. Fried it easy over. Is okay, that what they yeah, call it? Where you flip easy. it over, the yeah, yolk over kind easy, of fries yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Do you leave it where so, the yolk is coming out a little bit? Where it's, you yeah, yeah. It so it depends on my mood. Sometimes okay. I like it to just, you I'll know, drip you. everywhere. There you it's go. Great. There you go. Yeah. She said. Sometimes I, yeah, just a little residue is great, but <laughs> yeah, Got do that you. every morning. Got you. So I'm, I'm really happy that you're still doing well and the medicine is still working right and no, no bad effects. Yeah. For, yeah, honestly, there's not really, I actually switched. So the med that allowed me to eat, I was on for 
three years and then I, I switched to one that does the same thing but has less side effects. And okay. so I started that about a month ago. I'm, I feel better. Wow. So you were having so, no side effects and now you got better. even less than none. What, you have yeah. negative now. You're in the negative side effects. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, dude, it's great. Beautiful. So you were doing a, a, a <laughs> podcast called Rice Cakes and Pears. In September of last year, you recorded your final episode. What made you want to leave podcasting? Yeah. So it was a, a variety of things. So something that I, I've struggled with for a long time, and I think creators struggle with this to a certain extent, is my I would determine my my worth by, you know, how successful an episode was. But I, I, I was aware of that and I knew that wasn't a good way to think, but it, it kept coming back at me. And I just remember feeling really stressed out a lot of the time. Uh, so that, that was part of it. That, that wasn't the main reason though. The really, the biggest reason was I, uh, you know, my wife got pregnant and I, I started thinking, you know, I'm transitioning to more of a full-time job and, uh, it, it sounds a little bit lame, but I, I kind of just wanted to focus on that and just focus on, you know, being with my family. I found, Oh, I also found myself and we were talking this a little bit too, like, when you're, when you're creating something, it's your baby, you're thinking about it all the time. And so I also found that it kind of took away from my wife, my wife and I's relationship sometime where like, we'd be out and be like, yo, this is a perfect opportunity for content. Like we should shoot this. She's like, no, like I want to just hang out. Like just chill, this man. is our date night, bro. Yeah. Um, and so it, it got in the way just a little bit. Um, but the main thing is that I just wanted to focus on, you know, my family and, and not worrying so much about creating stuff, but yeah. It, and it's just a variety of things. Well, let me tell you, that's not lame because you were like, that is going to be lame for me to say that I don't want to be <laughs> thinking about my podcast 24-7. That's totally not lame. That's totally understandable <laughs> because I feel like that's a thing that I try not to do is like I try not to make everything content. And I think there was a point in time where I wanted to be like that, but now I don't even want to be like that. Where I'm like, I don't even want to do that. Like, <laughs> I don't want to bring a camera out 24-7. I don't want to like make everything about you know, uh, like, like make everything a, a piece of content. So I totally agree with you there. So you, yeah. it was, it was like a couple, uh, it, it was a couple of things going on with the, the mental health aspect of it. And you just didn't want to interfere with your family life anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I've always, you know, I think cause I'm 26 born in 97, it's kind of on that cusp of like, you didn't grow up with t technology, but you did yeah. once you started, you know, high school. Yeah. And, uh, I think it really just affected my brain, just like the, the shallowness of social media. And that's just something I, I think it's just a weakness of mine where I just, yeah. you know, fall into that mindset of like, Oh, I'm not worth anything. Like right. no one cares. And, uh, yeah, that, that's definitely something I've, I've really loved working on over the past year is like learning how to just like love myself, enjoy, you know, what I created. Cause I'm really, really proud of it. And I'm so glad it's out there. Like, right. I can't wait to show Nora, uh, those episodes and right. is, yeah, I'm so, I, I'm so glad that I, I, uh, created those episodes and met so many people, especially you did. Thank you. Thank you. Same. Likewise. So Thanks, was there bro. like, why did you start podcasting again? I forgot why, why you, why you said you initially got into it. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and, uh, so since 2018, that's where I kind of hit that rock bottom mental health wise, physically. And I, I really had to rehabilitate, you know, my ability to deal with stress and pretty much like I was trying to go the normal route of you go to college after you graduate high school. I did my mission trip, right? That's kind of a cultural thing. You go on a mission, do that stuff. And when I came back, I was like, all right, I'm going to go to college. And I kept like my body kept shutting down every time I, I, w I went to school because the stress got too much. And I just would like, you know, start seeing shadows or start having weird, bizarre thoughts that weren't just like crazy thoughts that come in every now and then they were very like loud and just very alarming. And it happened every time I had stress. And, uh, I, I think I dropped out like once or twice before. And in 2020, it's when I started the meds things are going great, but still my stress tolerance, I think those are connected, but also not. Um, and so I ended up dropping out again <laughs> that fall. And, uh, I, I had so much time on my hands and it was an interesting time because I was, 
at a point where I, I was starting to eat food again. And I, I started just reflecting a lot of like, I've, I have this, this a ton of time right now. And I just felt like really inspired one afternoon or, or evening just to like create a podcast based off everything I believe in, which is that everyone deserves to have a voice. I think we live in a weird time where if you don't agree with someone, you're like evil. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you're doing yourself a disservice by not surrounding yourself with different minded individuals with different backgrounds. And I also just felt like it would be cool to bring a voice to the chronic illness space to people who've gone through really difficult situations. And I was still going through it at the time. So it was almost a little bit therapeutic for me. Right. So is there, do you like, how do you feel now that you haven't been podcasting for almost a year? Yeah, I feel good. I feel, uh, I feel really at peace. Um, I think, I think too, I, I know it sounds cheesy, but when you know, you know, like, let's say you meet someone or like something just feels right. You can kind of feel it in your gut. I felt at that time, um, cause I, I was really, cause I ended up taking a break like three months before officially right. ending the podcast. Right. And I was like, I'm going to take this break. And I really like, I, I cannot wait to come back and just come back swinging, you know, finding guests. I was ready to just go, go hard. And, uh, I just kind of had like this epiphany that it was time for me to move on. It, it's kind of hard to explain. No, I, I agree with you a hundred percent when you say that, like when you get those feelings, because I often talk about those when I, it's like, you know, you know, you feel it. There's no real way to articulate it and you can't explain it. It's just something, yeah. you know, internally. And I get those a lot. And that's when I make a decision on something. Like if I really, a lot of times that happens to me and like, sometimes I'm like, well, you know, so-and-so is not going to like this, but I know this is the right move or I'm yeah. not going to, I might not like it, but I know this is the right move. But generally that, that, that feeling it uh, is, is accompanied with a feeling of peace. Like that, that notion or that thought you get is usually not like yeah. a stressful thing. It's more like, like you just know about it. It's like you feel it and it feels good almost, or it just feels like nothing. It's just like, Oh yeah. That's what's gonna. That's yeah. what it's gonna be now. It's not like, oh my god, it has to be this way. Like that's the kind of like your ego, I think, talking. Yes. But when you know something, it's hard to are uh, hard to articulate, like you're saying. But you just, it's just like a download, like boom, and it's like, yeah, okay, dude. that's it. That's what it is. So yeah, I'm I'm glad that you're saying that because I finally know somebody else that kind of that feels that way. Yeah, that's how yeah. I, I get that a lot. Um, when it comes to the show, you know, like people ask me like, how does the show come about? And it's like I don't even I just. It just comes to me like, oh, I don't know who's going to be on what episode or what's going to be what. I don't really sit there and think about it a lot of times. I don't sit here with a pencil and paper and I'm just like, okay, this this year, this this episode, I'm going to do this. It's just kind of like, oh, that's what we're going to do. Okay, great. It just kind of comes and that's it. And same thing with the bigger picture of the show. It's like, okay, well, we're going to do that. That's not, that feels right, you know? So uh, long story short, I definitely feel the same way. So that that's good that you, that you felt that you didn't fight that. You didn't feel, did you feel like any kind of um, ego about that? Like, oh, I'm quitting. This is not yeah. right. Like you feel bad about it. Totally. Totally. I felt like, you know, I'm giving up. Like I, I had talked with a, a few or one, one guest in particular where he's kind of saying, you know, like almost like, not like he's looking down on people who have that mindset or give up because of social media. Cause it's kind of like letting the big man win. Um, but yeah, I definitely had kind of those, I don't know the, the, the negative voice coming back at me saying, you know, you're, you're a quitter. You're, you're, you're not, you know, this could, could have been something so much more. Um, but for the most part, it was, it was an overwhelming, well, it, it's, you're right. It's not overwhelming, but it's just like a peaceful download. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And just to say like, who's to say that it is over. You never know yeah. when things come back around. So, I mean, it's totally possible. It's not like you deleted the episodes. They're still up there. You're not like yes, ashamed sir. of it. So do you ever think no there way. may be a time that you may circle back and do it again? Definitely. Yeah. And I, I think uh, it's one thing that's really cool. I feel like us, you know, connecting is I feel like we both have that open mindset of going with the flow. Yeah. Let, let, feel it out. Um, I One comment I was thinking of is what one thing I love about your podcast whenever I listen, it's, it's very much, um, go with the flow. You're, you're not trying to force anything, but you're also very prepared, which is, which is like the oh, coolest thank thing. You. I try to be, I try to yeah. be. Yeah. Dude, that's thank like you. my biggest, that was my biggest, like 
focus like or I felt like it was my greatest asset was the preparation. I'd yeah. like I'd like look up to the, my idol Nardwar and just see this guy. Oh, he's like, that's a pre- pre- prepared as it gets. The most prepared, <laughs> and it's 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 honestly affected the way I do business now because I I, uh, I work with a lot of uh, small to medium sized businesses and I help them grow their uh, business online. And so we provide all sorts of services. Um, and so when I first meet them, I'm able to like do a deep dive and kind of stalk them a little bit and just like surprise them with all this weird knowledge. Yeah. Do you feel like you have a creative, are you scratching the creative itch in in any other area of your life? Um, honestly at work, I have a lot of freedom. Um, it's, it's almost like a, like a quarterback role where I have to collaborate with tons of people and, and come up with creative solutions. Right. And so, for now, I'm definitely scratching that itch, which has been really fun. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because I'm sure yeah. if you didn't, you'd go crazy, probably. Oh, for sure. Yeah, dude, yeah. being creative is, is, is such an outlet. Yeah, that's the one thing I hate in life is when I'm not being creative. Like, almost anything can be going on, but if that's not there, I I I'm like, feel like a mess, you know? Like, right? if I'm not doing the show, I want to be working on something secret on the side that I'm working on that nobody knows about yet. And if I'm not doing that, my life doesn't really feel full to me. Yeah. So I'm glad that you're scratching that itch, you know, because I think a lot of people that get into podcasting may just do it because it's a podcast and they're not necessarily creative and no, no shade to them. But, you know, I, I always wonder, I really didn't know, are you like, if you were a creative person or was it just something you did as a hobby? So you're, you're more like a, actually a creative person. Yeah, dude. I love the the creative process. Um, I, I, I hate not being original. And that kind of fuels me to want to be creative and, and do my own thing. Yeah. I, I've always, I, I think because I have been different from a young age, everyone has differences, but like having a feeding tube, having a disease, I've always felt different from people. And I, at first, you know, you kind of resent it, but over time, I'm like, this is my superpower. Like I love being different. And so I just, yeah, dude, being creative, doing your own thing, creating something that you can look back on is just so fun. Yeah. Well, you know, being different is going to make whatever you're doing much more creative because you're going to be showing them yeah. something you've, they've never seen before. I've never heard of that condition until you told me about it. So it's like, <laughs> wow, like that was in, you know, we got good feedback on that episode because it was a great story. So if you're from a different world, essentially from somebody, then yeah, your thing's automatically going to be going to be different because you're different, you know? Yeah. And that was the good thing about your show was everybody you brought on was different. And that was from what you, what you said before, that was the whole gimmick of your show for lack of a better word is that yeah. we're going to talk to somebody that's from a whole different planet essentially like we don't even know <laughs> like this is like we've never seen this before like this is a new like a condition of it. it's like like tlc but better not as yeah, exploitative dude, <laughs> dude shout out to shout out to tiktok though because like without that platform i don't know how i would discover as many people as i did it is such a cool place because I feel like if people are on TikTok, they're, they're comfortable at least talking about themselves online, at least on that app. Yeah. And so my thought process was, uh, and it, it would, obviously I'd reach out to people that I liked, you know, that I was interested in or resonated with, but it, it was just, it's crazy how you can just connect with so many different people on there. Yeah. And TikTok is the wild west. Like anybody Dude, can get wild on, west. anybody could get bumped up into the algorithm. It's not like yeah. Facebook or YouTube where it's like, pay to play or whatever, or Instagram. It's like anybody could blow up in a second. And yeah. There's a lot of sides to TikTok, and uh, you'll see a lot of interesting people on there. So that's where, right? you, that's where you are. Are you still on going through TikTok pretty yeah. frequently? It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, an, it's unescapable. <laughs> it's an addiction. Dude, it, it, it's addictive for sure. And it's crazy. I, I feel like TikTok is, is, I don't know if it's not bigger than Google, but it's, it's definitely, I feel like it's competing as another search engine. God, like people, massive, people man. go on there to search. Yeah. People get there a lot, like a lot of information about what's going on. Through, yeah. Through even TikTok. news. Yeah. Yeah. Cause put, I'm sure people do live feeds and stuff. Like when I used to be on Periscope, there'd be a lot of news live feeds on there and I would just watch them to find out what's going on in the world. So I'm only assuming the same thing is going on with TikTok. Yeah. No, yeah. I think the draw to is the transparency that TikTok brings. Like, sure, you have people who have like the perfect film editing, but like the ones that go viral are the ones that are just look real. It. Yeah, just doing it exactly. So, you have a new addition to the family. You, you, we alluded to it. We've talked about it a little bit here and there earlier in the show. Yeah. You said Nora. Who is that? 
Nora Lucy Barber. She was born January 5th, 2023. Oh, she was born the day um, after me. I, I forgot about that. Nice. Yeah. 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 Is she the Capricorn? Yeah. Is, is that the, because I'm Aquarius, so I thought she was Aquarius, but I, I'm at the end of January. Is that the one before? Yeah. That's the one before. Okay. Because I'm the yeah, sixth she's Capricorn. Capricorn. Nice. Nice. Beautiful, yeah. man. So how's that going? It's it's going great. It was, uh, dude, being a dad is awesome, but I, I can't speak for everyone because I feel like not everyone's prepared to be a dad. And I felt like, I don't think anyone will ever be fully prepared just because no, no one prepares you to be a dad. Well, if really, anybody's going to you be you, because you're prepared. If anybody's <laughs> going to be prepared, it's going to be you. Let's be real. You <laughs> are prepared. Yeah. And, uh, but, oh man, I, I had a lots of, you know, anxieties. I was nervous, but mostly just so excited. And when, when she came in, it was again, one of those gut feelings where it's, it's a download moment. You yeah, feel peace. This is it. Um, obviously the birth was, was an adrenaline rush. Um, uh, my wife killed it, but like, so, right. so crazy. Did you faint? Uh, but when, when you're holding her in your arms, she's just like a little alien. It's just so it, it's unreal. It, it's like, uh, it's a very divine feeling. It feels, you just feel really connected. Um, like your souls connect and, uh, it, it's special. It's really hard, but it's special. And it's re- it's very fulfilling. I've found for myself. Did you faint during the childbirth? Be honest. Be real. <laughs> Dude, how my, did, uh, like my wife that? was joking that I would, and I didn't, I was so <laughs> like intrigued. I was like, what the freak? There's a head coming out. Like, this is insane. You know, for somebody that was talking about their symptoms being exacerbated by stress, <laughs> you picked the most, besides like maybe going to war, the most, and even <laughs> there, you don't do a tour for 18 years. You're about to, you're doing an 18 year tour right now. <laughs> you have a baby. I mean, how, how's your stress level been from yeah, yeah. the pregnancy till yeah. now? Dude, ups and downs, but I feel like Aubrey and I have, have, have uh, built a really strong foundation where if I'm having a bad day, she's not going to be like, frick you dude. Like you're supposed to be a good husband. Like all this stuff, like and it's always a 50, 50. No one ever gives that 50 every day, but yeah, I definitely have had moments where I'm like my body shutting down Aubrey. I'm so sorry. And she's breastfeeding or like baby's crying. And then I'll, I'll uh, do my best to kind of make up for it the next day. So right. it's definitely tug and pull or whatever. I don't know. We, we, we make it work and it's been great. Well, I mean, if we know anybody's going to be like that, it's, it's Aubrey because we all know the famous ice cream shop story. When you told her, I need to go to the car. Isis is after <laughs> me. She was like, Shh, yeah. well, let's go. Like, what, what do you mean? Yeah. Isis, is, let's, let's shoot him up. Let's go. She Such was down since serious, day one, man. man the, the first date, like one of the greatest stories that I think I've heard on the show, like greatest first date for sure. She was like, yeah, ISIS she pulled like Tomb Raider, two guns out. She was like, where, where they at? Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Where and when dude, I, uh, again, the preparation, I really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, dude, that was, uh, yeah, it's, I, I feel lucky, man. I, I met such a cool girl that was so understanding and I'm glad, you know, I went through that difficult time, but again, it, it, I feel like it worked in my favor. I was able to sift through people who wouldn't have been down for that. Yeah. Was able to be comfortable in my own skin, tell her about ISIS, and she was, she yeah, was down let's to go, go to war. Where. She was down to go, let's to, go war, to war. And now you're having a baby, <laughs> which is to me in the same league. Because yeah. listen, if I were you, I'd be using that my condition as an excuse. Oh, I'd be just, I'd act like I would faint. I'm like, <laughs> I can't do it today. I gotta, I can't, I gotta go lay down. She's like, you. You know, you've never used it. You said she's not around, right? You've never used it in just because you wanted a day off. Yo, the, well, well one, one thing I'm probably have done it a little bit, but like <laughs> there's uh one of my symptoms is like, you know, when, when you're really tired, you kind of get manically like, like you start laughing a lot. Oh I'm yeah. Feeling a little manic. That's probably about 14 so that, hours a day for me. Yeah. yeah. If I get stressed sometimes I will hysterically laugh. Uh oh. And when 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 it's stressful here, it's because you know the baby's crying or like my wife's been through the ringer the whole day, and uh, I'll start laughing and it'll really piss her off. And it's <laughs> and it's funny because she she's like, I know it's your symptom, but that really pisses me off, and I totally get it because I'm literally laughing at her face because oh, I'm so stressed. No. Damn man, how long you guys been <laughs> that, together now? So uh, five years, married right. four. Beautiful. She hasn't thrown anything at you yet while you were laughing at her. 
Nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing, pro- a, no projectiles. Yeah. Yeah, she's such a she's such a gentle soul. So she's she'll she'll walk walk away or like leave the room, which I respect. Um, but I don't think we've ever gone like more than twenty four hours without like not making up after. Nice, like Beautiful. something. So that's what that's you love to hear, man. Love to hear that. So the baby's how old now? I forgot, like a year. So, uh, so she's almost eight months. Eight months. Okay, got it. Yeah. Right, right, right. Oh yeah, cause yeah, cause it was last January, right? Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, and. So how is it having an eight month old in your house right now? It's fun. So the first, the first six months is it's cool. Like, but they're kind of just a lump of nothing. Like, I don't know, like a dead weight a little bit, but right. still cute. Still, I mean, cute to us, maybe a little funny looking, yeah, little but once they thing. hit six months, they, they start, you know, their personality comes out a little bit. They start smiling. And so we're at this point where she's saying dada all the time, which I love. Did she say um, that first? Who did she say first? You or mom? Yeah, yeah. She said dad, dad. I was, I was, uh, it was right after an argument where I started laughing. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. But, like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, she said she's having trouble saying mama. She says nah, nah. But she's, she's getting there. Oh, man. Yeah, definitely don't start laughing after that. That's when something will fly. That's when something's going to fly, uh. man. That's amazing. And you had, you didn't, did you get like, did you get like three dogs like at the same time as your wife was giving birth or something like that? I remember we were on Instagram. You're like, yeah, I got like 12 dogs in my house. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, dude, it was, it was, uh, it's funny timing. Cause it was, I guess a year or last, last April, not this past April, but April, 2022 or March. Um, we, so we've been trying to have kids for a year or so, no luck. And so we're like, yeah, let's not try. Like, like, let's stop trying. Like, we're not going to, we're not going to put pressure on it. And then as soon as we did that, she got pregnant and oh. it just happened that our, our dog Maggie got pregnant. So, um, Oh my God. Yeah. yeah that was two nuts. pregnant people in that. How did you do the stress <laughs> again with the stress? How did you deal yeah, with that? Dude. Two pregnancies at the same time. How long is a yeah. dog pregnant for? Dude, dogs, dogs have a fast pregnancy. It's like six weeks. What? Yeah. Oh my God. This sounds like a business opportunity for me. That's what that's bro. <laughs> Have you cranked out another, another <laughs> round or what? Yeah, dude, it's, it's tempting for sure. We, we didn't want to put her through it again. <laughs> I'd be like, listen, we're getting the neighbor's dog over here every six weeks, baby. Bang, bang. <laughs> dude, it, it's hilarious, man. The, the, my, uh, I guess Maggie, she's, she's three now too last year and she's, she was able to, you know, have puppies, but when we we're trying to mate with this other dog that we met, they're the same breed. They're both just humping each other. They're like they don't know what they're doing. It's the funniest <laughs> thing. How many dogs did you end up keeping? So we we kept one. She ended up having five. One passed away because I had a cleft Damn. palate. And then the other two, one went to my mother in law. So we see that one a lot still. And then the other one went to a family friend. And what breed is it again? A mini golden doodle. Is this a family friendly dog or yeah? How, how does it deal yeah. with the children? It's good. Great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Maggie, the mom, I think since giving birth, she's kind of like, she's a little more ca- cautious or just kind of like wiser, I guess. And then, uh, Millie is her daughter and she's just like a ball of sunshine and just wants to lick Nora all the time, which is cute, but we nice. gotta, you know, push her away. Sometimes. So that's good that you got the, you got the pregnancy from the dog way out of the way before the <laughs> baby came. Right. It's like, yeah, imagine yeah, they no, came at the same time. Good. <laughs> the dog yeah, was dude, like eight nuts. months by then. Right. Yeah. And you said you nuts. ended up keeping one, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wow. So you got a full house now, but when we were talking to you, it was just you and the wife. <laughs> The yeah, days were dude. the days were simpler. Are you busier than ever now? Even without the podcast? Yeah, yeah. Yes and no. Um, yeah, it's like a different kind of busy. So I, I work so working remote now, which is which is awesome. I'll just roll out of bed, put a hat on, and I'm good to go. Boom. And uh get off work around four thirty. And then after that, it's kind of hanging out with the wife, but also we gotta, you know, entertain the baby, take care of the baby. Um so busy in that sense, just, and then that, that's another thing about being a parent and I, I, I'm a novice, like it's been eight months, but you, your, your mind is always going, like you have to think about, you know, this other human yeah. all the time instead of just wanting to numb out on TikTok or just do yeah. nothing, which I still do sometimes. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's awesome. But, uh, yeah, your mind, your mind's going a lot. It's busy. Thinking about the Mentally. Well, not I'm glad you freed up space from the pod. You don't think about the podcast now. Cause that would have kicked it right out. Yeah, dude. And that was a, yeah, 
definitely having a kid was like the main motivator is like, yeah, I want to, I want to be fully present as a dad. And, uh, I, tr- I try to strive for that. And it's, it's been a, a really good decision. I'm happy I did it. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. I love to see it. And like I was telling you before we got on the air, you're one of the people I love to talk about to my friends. I'm like, yo, I got this friend, Zach. Like he was, he went from here to there. Like he was, you know, in, in, I forgot where you were doing that mission trip and yeah. you, could, you were vomiting everywhere and you were having a mental breakdown to see where you are now is really amazing, man, to see your life like totally change for the better, to see how great you're doing. I love to see it. So how do you look back? Does it feel like a whole different world? Does it feel like a different you? Because yeah. it was only three years ago that you were going through that. Look where you are now. I'm so glad to see it. How does it feel looking back on that time? Yeah. No, I appreciate it. So it's like, I feel like each year you, you look back or you, you learn something um, about yourself. And then I feel like each year I look back or, or, or not each year, but during that year, I'm like, man, I haven't made any progress. And then at the end of the year, you're like, yo, look how far I came. Like I was, I was unable to move. I was unable to get out of the house. And now I have a full-time job. We just bought a house, um, which we're, we're super blessed. Um, yeah. But it's, it's, I, I try to look back and appreciate uh, where I came from. Um, and I, I think that happens a lot with, with just the faith that I believe in is, is always trying to, you know, be humble, remember where you came from. Um, but yeah, I, I just feel like every year you learn something new and you appreciate even more like hindsight's 2020. You definitely appreciate where you came from. You, you, you realize now, whether it's in a couple years that five years ago, three years ago, that was for your benefit because it, it morphed you into a better person. So that's what you think. You think that that time made you who you are today, which is a better person than you would have been if that didn't happen. Yeah. I definitely wouldn't go through it again, but it's, it's given me, I don't, I don't know if I would have done the podcast, dude. Uh, That was like a huge thing too. Like the mental health side of the podcast. I don't know if we would have ever met or met your wife or who knows. You know, you can play this this game all day. You know what? It's it's crazy, right? It's, It's good to, I think it's good to live life without, regrets not saying you you don't not regret things but letting things be like being at peace that things happened yeah live in the moment and try and move forward yeah are you the kind of person that feels like it was meant to happen or is everything just chaos in your in your mind yeah yeah i think you know i think there are like soulmates you think of soulmates i think you can have multiple soulmates i think you can have multiple paths that you can choose to go on and all of them can be successful. Um, but I think there are some things that are meant to be. Um, but yeah, for the, for the most part, I definitely feel like this was the path I, I, I don't know if I necessarily chose, but it's, it was chosen for me and I've, you know, taken it in stride and it's just become what it is today. Yeah. I think there's certain things I was talking about this yesterday that is inescapable that are meant for you. Yeah. You will not miss it. Like, Good and bad. There's certain things that you'll, you know, maybe you you run into somebody or something cool happens or something bad happens, and that's just random. But I think very, it's very seldom that anything is random. And it's something so big like that, like the way you went through, it was like, and a lot of people may not want to hear it if they're in a bad situation, which is totally fine, respect it, understand it. It's not how you feel. But in my mind, almost everything is like, that's what it was supposed to be. Like, you weren't going to miss it. It was for you, especially if you think about how many things like maybe I don't know if you think about you go back in your mind and go, imagine, imagine I got that thing I wanted. Look where it would have ended up. Like I even think about it with stuff I didn't get or stuff that didn't happen yeah. that I really wanted. I'm like, thank God that didn't happen because look where I like I'm way better than where I would have been if I would have doing that or if if that fell through, you know, if that came true or whatever. So, yeah, I'm, I'm big into that camp, too, that I think most things are meant to happen and you will not miss it. It ain't, it ain't going to miss you. You know, it just, but you can't really dwell on it. You just got to just live every day and not really think about it too much, I guess. Yeah. It, it paints a, a beautiful picture when it's, when it's you, like you're authentically yourself, all these events that have happened in the past that that's your, you know, you're painting. That's who you are today. Yeah. And it, I think too, like, I, I, I don't necessarily have like hate for people who, I think everyone goes through stuff, but sometimes people don't go through stuff, real, the really difficult stuff until later in life. And yeah. you kind of notice that their personalities are a little bit dry. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. That, so it yeah, just I've makes heard us that more interesting. Yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> so do you have, what do you think got you through all that to where you are now? What do you think it was like the pillars or the, the mainstays that got you through that? It, would it be mindset, yeah. be it people? Like, what, we, what do you think it was? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good question. I, uh, one thing that comes to mind is therapy for sure. And I, I know we're, we're, we're in a, an era, I guess, where, you know, mental health people talk about it. It's awesome. Specifically for me, the, the side of therapy that's helped me a lot is called EMDR. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Mm. So it's a, it's a form of therapy where it's, it's like the opposite of talk therapy where you're talking through your issues or talking through things it's a form of therapy where you actually don't talk. You just feel through your problems and the therapist is kind of your guide. Really? And so, yeah. Yeah. So a session, for example, is they'll, uh, so my therapist, she has these two little vibrating objects that you hold in your hands that kind of go one after the other. And so it's supposed to help you stay present. So when you're processing traumas or things that you've been through, um, you, you're, you're able to kind of, remember this feeling that's going back and forth and it keeps you in the moment and it, it prevents you from kind of disassociating for the most part. And so I'll be holding these. And then before that, we'll kind of build up with what I'd like to process for the day, whether it be my disease, my anxiety, or an, a specific event that happened in my past. And then I'll, I'll uh, kind of lay back, sit back and she'll be like, okay, uh, where do you feel that in your body? And so she kind of primes me up and then I hold these two objects and then she'll be like, all right, now let whatever happens happen. And so I just hold it and it's completely silent for like a minute or two. And then I just let my mind process for the first time about that event. I'm not forcing anything. And it's really beautiful. It's like you're, everyone has their, their traumas, their demons. And it's almost like an unwinding of like a tangled piece of, I don't know, whatever, like it just feels like I'm unwinding for the first time in years since that event. Wow. And then uh, it, it's it's really cool. And it, it's been pretty dang effective, honestly. And it, it just it gives you confidence. And it I think trauma, I mean, the reason we have trauma is because we haven't been able to process it yet. So sometimes we can't process it just through talking. Do you notice emotional or physical reactions when you start really processing something like tears or Dude. stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. So for me, I like, I feel a lot of this like pr trauma, like in my head, I feel like almost like a heat flash where it's really hot. So I physically like start to sweat a little bit. <laughs> and, uh, and then while I'm processing, it feels like steam is coming out. Like, wow. uh, like the, the hot. Yeah. Yeah. Like the cartoon. Exactly. And, uh, it's, it's exhausting afterwards. Cause you're like, Holy crap. I just went through the ringer, but it's like a, a good feel kind of like after a really tough workout. Wow. So how did you get, how'd you get in contact with the, with that lady? how did you get in into that type yeah. of therapy? So I originally started, I think 2021 end of the year. I, I'd gone to talk therapy where you talk through your issues and it was okay. And then again, you kind of just go through your options, see what's out there. And I saw someone did EMDR. They introduced, I think my mom actually suggested it. And so I met with this guy and um, the way he did it is he did the fingers back and forth. So you watch it. So it's back and forth. I, pre I prefer just holding the, the objects and closing my eyes. It's less, uh, I don't know. It's just easier. <laughs> yeah, that sounds hypnotizing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, that it's definitely has like, like a hypnotic a vibe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just go, I black out. Yeah, you know, and right. <laughs> that's wild. So that is the one. That's the one thing you would attribute, like your your perseverance through that bad time through is is uh, to is the um, therapy. Yeah, yeah. Being able to process, you know, that day where I thought ISIS was after me, and, and days leading up where I didn't even realize I was I was going through a lot, and uh, kind of unlocking these memories that maybe have been suppressed that were very unpleasant that I just haven't thought about for years. Yeah. That must so be, that, that must be yeah. tough. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely tough. It's, it's scary, but if you can find the right fit, it's, I would honestly highly recommend it. I know everyone has their, you know, different types of therapies that help them, but that's, that's been really That sounds like stress too, though. It's like a stressful, everything is straight. You know, for somebody who doesn't like stress, everything, even the therapy is <laughs> stressful. What's going on? Yeah. Zach? What are you doing to, Everything we talked about is stressful. What are you doing to not stress? What 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 are you guys doing? 
Yeah, dude. I, so I still swim. Um, that's, that's kind of my therapy for sure. It's like the de-stressor, not, not okay. the stressful kind of therapy, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. really enjoy swimming. Um, Utah is amazing, man. There's so many mountains. My wife and I, we love to go on drives, um, just get some fresh air. There's tons of deer here, which nice. are awesome. They're just little harmless creatures that are kind of cute, honestly. Okay. I was going to ask if you hunt them, but I guess your, your answer to that said, tells me, <laughs> tells me you're not shooting them. Okay. Yeah, dude. I, I, I'd feel so bad, honestly. Right. But you know, if somebody gave you a plate of deer, you wouldn't mind. You just don't want to shoot it. Would you eat yeah, some yeah. deer? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I I take a little bite. Yeah, the inside ain't cute. The the, the outside is cute. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we we actually have a park uh, right across from our house, and that that was kind of a right. that determined why we got this house. Just such as we love being outside and just you know getting fresh air. Right. The the park cross street, and you told me that you said it was built in the fifties, and they said somebody hung themselves in the kitchen, right? <laughs> yeah dude it's got a lot of history that's why the price tag was down yeah because rates are so high man that's how we got it like man what a great deal like oh yeah by the way somebody killed themselves in the kitchen all right thanks for closing the deal hope you guys like it i wouldn't be surprised like every every good deal out there that's that looks a little too good to be true there's a reason why it's a there's no such thing as a free meal there's things things (laughs) can be too good to be true it's like oh yeah by the way there was a a man killed his whole family in his house by the way okay thank you uh (laughs) thanks for buying no, yeah, we're, actually, we're definitely no, hanging out with was, some ghosts. It's yeah, there was, there was none of that in the house. You just got a good deal. That we're just that's so what we far, said before. So far, the show. so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's beautiful, man. <laughs> so if anybody, if anybody's an example of things can get better, it's definitely you, Zach. And like I said, I love to tell your story to other people to be like, look at where this dude is at now. It's amazing. So if you haven't heard Zach's first episode, you got to go check it out. Zach, do you have any? Final words for everybody. Anything you want to say? We could stay as long as you want, as short as you want, whatever you got. Yeah, let's yeah. hear it. No, nah, dude, I I'm so grateful to like be be here talking to you today. Thank it's you, really man. cool. Like these types of moments are awesome because they'll 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 live on the internet, right? And I can look back on this. It's just so cool to look back where you come from, and things are more clear. Hindsight 2020. But I guess advice I would give to someone who's just struggling. Um, just like there, there's no, there's not nothing I can tell you that'll fix it, but I just want to let you know that you have worth, like you, you deserve to be here. And that negative voice that's telling you you don't deserve to be here is a lie. And, uh, I'm just so proud of you. I think often we're our biggest critic. Um, I mean, I, I struggled with that, uh, leading up to stopping my podcast, but, there's ebbs and flows. You're doing great. You're doing better than you think. Uh, that, that's what I leave it as is we all have challenges. We all have weaknesses, but cut, I, I don't want to say cut yourself some slack because it's way easier said than done. But from me to you, I don't know you, but I'm really proud of you. I don't need to say anything because if I say anything else, I'm going to ruin it. So let me just <laughs> let me just say this, Zach. It was amazing to have you here. And, you know, if you haven't heard his last episode again, check it out. Peace and love. See you next time. I can't say anything because I I can't top that. I can't top what you just did. 